This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is The Ramble, we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York, City so nice, they named it twice. This is our weekly get-together with the one, <laughs> the only, toothless, uh, <laughs> Stephen Kravitz. Are you st- taking care of it? Hello, Stephen. Hello, Alex. Uh, are you taking care of that, uh, that uh, tooth of yours? You know, it's funny. I got a remember last week we talked about Clear Choice. Oh, yeah, you went to Clear Choice to get it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't go yet. I'm. I'm going. Um, I'm going to see an oral surgeon on Friday. Oh, okay. And uh, one of your listeners, mm. or one of the viewers, I am me that said Clear Choice is a ripoff. Oh, really? Somebody who listened to our show or your show. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I've never, I've never, you know, heard of anybody that went to Clear Choice or whatever. But there's one part of it that gets me, is they say, "Yes, we can do it in less than one day." Wait a right. minute. Hold on a second. Your gums, you know, when you pull a tooth, it has to heal. Right. And then after it heals, they gotta drill into the bone. Aye. And, Aye. No, don't, don't. It, it, you won't even notice it. They drill into your teeth. That's bone. Right. Okay. They drill into your bone and screw. I don't like that either. I don't like them drilling into my teeth. Listen, I'm going to have a thing done to my eyes in a couple of weeks where they're going to lift the lids and right and take care of the bottoms. Uh, I'll still have bags, but and Left. that idea bothers me because I they don't even put, even put me out. They pump me full of Valium and stuff, so I'm happy. Right, but you know they're gonna put they're gonna numb the eyelids and every and I'm going jeez you know do I, and then and knock me out knock then, me then for, out then with for three days well they say they almost knock you out you know uh, like they didn't knock me out when they put the seeds in my prostate they did right. a, they did what was called a uh, spinal or whatever right right and they made me an epidermal. And ep- well, no, it wasn't that. It was, a, a, but it was. I my I was dead from the waist down. Which, and that's different. How th- that's different. How exactly? I was going to make that joke before you got to it. Well, but, sorry. Anyway, and then uh, you feel like a paraplegic for about three hours. I have a, really? I have a friend who's a paraplegic, and I told him. I said, I now know what you go through every day. Right. You know. Uh, I mean, that idea that, hold on a second, my eyes are tearing. See, that's why I'm having the operation. Right. Uh, that uh, uh, that, that uh, I told him, I said, it, it just was amazing because you just feel nothing below your waist. You just, and you can't move your legs or anything. And it took about right. three, three hours for it to wear off. But in the meantime, they didn't put me out. Because they, really? they didn't want to put me out because they said I'm too old to be put out. I went. I thought you could get to be too, you get to drink when you're 21. You know, right, I mean? right, right, right. So I said, well, but you're not going to put me out. They said you won't know a thing. And what they did is they gave me like a heavy dose of Valium or something, right? Which put me in this la la land that I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Right. But what I could hear, and this was a a, a wake up call for me is I could hear what they talk about in the OR. Oh, is that right? When they're operating on somebody like well, That's kind of weird. And and you know what they were talking about? So what, what? are you going to do this weekend? Oh, we're, we're going up to our cabin up in the country. Oh, that's nice. How's the wife and kids? Oh, they're fine. Right. And this guy's right, in, right. in there diddling with my prostate, right? So fine. So, but I didn't know what was going on. So that's probably right. what's going to happen here. I'm not going to. Time will just pfft, go like that, you know. But then afterwards, I got to put ice packs on my eyes every 15 minutes for two really for three days. For three days. Yeah, I guess to keep the bruising from getting too bad. I'll look like I I I won't be able to do a show that week. 
Okay. Right. The next week, I'll probably wear dark glasses through every show. Right, right. We talked about this last week. Yeah, it looks like somebody beat you up, you know. Right. In fact, somebody sent me a picture. She had it, and she sent me pictures of her operation. And right. I went, oh, my God, I don't want to do that. You know, I mean, it really, it looks like I have an abusive wife or something, you know. Right, right, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Marjorie, walk down the street with her with my glasses off. And right. And have everybody stare at her. And every once in a while, just turn to her and say, stop hitting me. Yeah. Well, did you ever have a girlfriend, for instance, who got something like a black eye you had nothing to do with, and then you walk down the street with them, and everybody gives no. you dirty looks? No, that never happened to me. Uh, that happened to you? It happened once, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, had, really? it had nothing to do with me. She bumped into a, a door or something, and she got this black eye. Right. And then we're walking down the street, and everybody's giving me dirty looks. Sure. You know, well, I'm sorry. I'm not a door. Go go right. give dirty looks to the door. Ridiculous. Well, people don't know. Yeah. People don't know. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so so uh, you so you forgot about going to Clear Choice. Yeah, I don't know. You know, there a place that says we'll put it in plants for like nine hundred dollars or something like that. Right. Well, let's ask the viewers. I mean, has anybody gone to Clear Choice? Okay, well, you know, we'll uh, we'll wait for them to answer us. Uh, right. We record this ahead of time, so right. but there will be things that will come up on the uh, side panel here, the chat. So if anybody does this, wants, does this air every Wednesday? Yeah, I put it on on Wednesday. I put it day and date. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we can get really, you know, we can get topical and things like. That. Right. 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 You know, we're not we're not going on and going. So uh, how do you think the Civil War is going so far? <laughs> <laughs> hey yeah. custard how do you feel about little yeah. big horns it's just amazing to me that they can't give you like a clipper to put in there just 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 for cosmetic purposes right because you right. are you are an actor after all and I, right. know, I know there are parts for people with no teeth but you know i mean yeah few and far between few and far between and they're not usually big roles what i'm thinking you know what i'm thinking of doing I get the I got I signed up for this thing called the uh, uh, casting something or another, and they send these casting notices for extras. Right. Uh, and I have to then sign up for this thing in order to be able to get all the information. Right. But, but I was thinking of just trying it. What the hell? I did a lot of them for people who are like uh, over the uh, you know at age eighty, just you right, know, right. Be, be in a crowd or whatever. And right, I think it sure. Pay, pays it pays union scale. It's about two hundred bucks a day. Right. You know. But you treat it kind of like cattle. Are you really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, you eat after the uh, principals eat. You don't get a trailer. You sit out in the rain sometimes. You sit on the curb. You wait around for hours and hours yeah. and hours. You, you know. They don't have an extras dressing room. Not on any <laughs> set that I've been on. <laughs> No. I think that's hilarious. I mean, but I, I don't mind being treated like cattle. You know, I mean, I was, I'd, I've i never done movies. I've never been in movies. Right. And um, it's what I set out to do when I went into radio. Really? I, I, radio was going to be the way to pay the bills. And then I figured if I did well enough in radio, they'd ask me to be in movies. Right. Well, <laughs> I never wound up in movies. No, they did take some TV shows in San Francisco, and they shot movies in San Francisco. Yes, of I'm sure. Well, I wonder why you well, won't ask. I auditioned for a few, but right. I never got in. I never got them. You know. Well, uh, they have any? Do you have any acting chops? There's this woman, Nancy. What's her name in San Francisco's casting director? And oh, uh, I forget. Yeah, Nancy. I'm trying to remember her last name. And I, she used to, she liked me, so she used to call me in for stuff. I got called in for a Schwarzenegger film for a part. Oh, really? Yeah, but I, I just, I, I, I guess I'm just not that good an actor or whatever, you know, that, or that I don't do it enough that I know how to do it, or that, right. worst of all, I'm not very good at auditions, you know? Okay. You know, I, I often told people who wanted to audition me for a radio show, send us your audition tape. I said, the only audition I'm going to do for you is for you to hire me on for like a week while someone goes on vacation. And I said, right. you're gonna hate me on Monday, you're gonna think 
a little bit about it on Tuesday, and by Wednesday, you're going to want to hire me. Right. I said, but if I do an audition for you, you're not even going to want me. Right, right, you know? right. And, and so auditions really don't count. What counts is what you're going to do once you get there. Auditions are a screening process. You either fit the mold or you don't. You're like when you're at an audition, you're in the uh, waiting room, and you see 12 other people that look very similar to you. Yeah, well, I will always think of you as thug number three. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was crony number two. Was it crony number two? Yes, it was. Oh, Thank okay. you. So that's up from thug number three. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But I do get killed by Eastwood. Yeah, that, that's a great uh, claim to fame. Who, right. who was it? There was an actor who did a lot of movies where he killed people. And uh, after he'd do a scene with somebody and kill them, he'd give them a bouquet of flowers. Well, Eastwood came up to me and said, nice working with you, Stephen. Pleasure blowing you away. <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> yeah, he really did. Oh, uh, wow. wow. Right after my death scene. Yeah. Um, you said he was great to work with. Oh, he's the best. He was the best to work with. Yeah. You know, it was amazing. You know, he just had finished another movie, which is going to be on, uh, I think, HBO Max. Right. Uh, with him starring in it. At right. Ni he's 92. Is that right? That's what I That's what I understand. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Echo, how old is Echo? How old is Clint Eastwood? Hmm? Clint Eastwood is 91 years old. 91 years old. 91. You were close. Yeah. Born on uh, May 31st, 1930. Really? Yeah. yeah what no. is Echo? I've that, heard of Alexa. That's Alexa. And I've heard of Cyrus. Well, I, 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 I got, it's an Alexa I'm talking to, but the, oh, actual, okay. the actual product is called, I have to, can't have to whisper, Echo. Okay. All right. Uh, but, the, but the people use the term Alexa in order to talk to it. But right. you have a choice. You can put in a choice of words, and one of them is Echo. Right. So what I did is I put in that rather than Alexa because my name is Alex. Right. And somebody might yell at me, Alex, and then all of a sudden Alex will say, what do you want? Right, so, right, 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 so right. That, that's why we, and by the way, Marjorie has a friend named Echo. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. The kid, somebody she, named their kid Echo? Well, she's Chinese. I guess it's a common Chinese name. Echo. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it's spelled. I, I don't know if it's E-C-H-O or whether it's E-C-C-O or something like that. Right, 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 or, right, right. Or E-C-O or whatever, so. Right. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's an odd name. Well, yes, I mean, it's kind of a nice name for a woman, don't you think? You think so? Yeah, I think it's a sweet name. Yeah. Echo. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, it's better. How than, are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? It's, Echo. It's better than Dweezil or Moon Unit. It's certainly better than Moon Unit. Yeah. It's certainly better than Moon Unit. Yeah, and that was what Zappa named his kid. Right. But right. I, I think uh, she changed it just to Moon. Is that right? Yeah, but Dweezil Zappa kept the name Dweezil. Right. Right. And we got used to it. We got used to it. We didn't mind the name. At first, it was kind of like, are you kidding? It's like, who's the, who's the actress that named their kid Apple? Well, I think, you're, I think you are. Your life is somewhat figured out or dependent on uh, your ability to uh, live with the name you were given. I Who mean, named their kid Apple? I, I don't know. Um, you don't remember? It's some actress. Oh, Apple, Apple, Apple. Yeah, I I think it was like, yeah, it's a mo pretty modern actress too, the current actress. Was it like Gwyneth Paltrow? I think it was or? Gwyneth Paltrow named your kid Apple. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Now that's you, a stupid name. Well, no, I think they would have done better to go with the name iPhone, but they did <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Well, no, but I grew up with the name Schwarzman. And, right. And, and that kind of dictated my life a little bit because I spent my whole life having to tell people, hey, no T, two N's. Right. You know, because they'd always... That's like I got, I got a friend whose name is Silberberg. Not Silberberg. No V's, two B's. Silberberg. Silberberg. And every time he's got probably 
spell it out for right. people. Right, right, right. It's Silberberg. I can't even pronounce it. Silberberg. Silberberg. <laughs> Silberberg. He's got uh, three books out right now. Really? Yeah. So the kids' book. books. Kids' books. Oh, okay. But anyway, so it was Schwarzman. It was. I, I had a few little pop problems about that, and then. Uh, when I was a kid, I had a nickname for my from my parents nicknamed me Bolo. Because, Bolo. Yes. Well, here's the reason why. You okay, know, let's you, hear this. You know, in the Jewish religion, right? Because you're Jewish. Sure. That you name your child after a dead relative. Right, and you only you, you use the first initial. Is it? You just use the first initial. That's right. I right. named after my great grandfather Samuel. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was the first. I thought it was actually the name. No. But anyway. It, it can be. It can be. It can be. At that time, the only really dead relative that was significant to my father was his brother, who died at 21. And really? His, his name was Boleslav. Oh, my goodness. Well, That's a name. Well, yeah. But if you shortened it here in America, you would shorten it to Bolo. Okay. So uh, they didn't want to name saddle me with the name Bolo. They felt it was just too European. Right. Okay? So they gave me a very anglicized name, Bennett. Right. Gordon Schwarzman. Gordon was a family name. Where did Alex come from? Well, that goes a long way into my story. We haven't gotten there yet. All right. So, Bye. so my parents always called me Bolo, and until I was like eight, I didn't know my my name was really Bennett. Really. And then I wanted to be called Ben. But I don't. Oh, even, really? Yeah, but I don't even like being called Ben. I like being called Bennett. If you're going to call me by my for real first right. name. Right. Certainly, you're not a Benny. But at that time, I called myself Ben, and so I stopped with the Bolo because it was like. When my parents say Bolo, I go. That's not my parents. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So, um, but I. Um, so you were never a Benny. No, I was never a Benny. No. No. That's so, like I. There's only two people that call me Stevie. Yeah. So, Will and Debbie Durst. Really. Right. Oh God. Well. They're the only ones. They're the only ones allowed to. Uh, oh, okay, Stevie. Anyway. Yeah. Easy. Uh, easy. Uh, uh, <laughs> I uh, so so what happened was is then I I, I was using the name in radio because everybody has to take a stage name and you're not going to use Schwarzman in those days. Right. Today you might because there's a Schwarzenegger, right? Right. But anyway, uh, so I I figured I would take my first name Bennett, right? And make it my last name because that's a good okay. last name. Right. And then I called myself Jerry Bennett because I like Jerry Lewis. Oh really? Yeah. So I was Jerry. There's a confession. I was Jerry Bennett until I got into the military, and then after the military, I got out, and uh, they said, uh, "Oh, and then I kept using Jerry Bennett." And then I went to Houston, Texas, and I became James Bond. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> I didn't pick. I didn't pick it. The station did. That's what the station was doing. They wanted a morning man named James Bond. So. Right. Okay. So then they gave me a nighttime talk show, and I had to change my name. And I figured, what am I going to go back to, Jerry Bennett? And I got to a point where, you know, I, I, that name did not appeal to me. Right. I wanted something really different. And my father had just died. Okay. And his name was Alex. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, is that right? So to honor your father, you chose Alex Bennett. Yeah. So my name, my show business name, is a little bit of both of my is right. part of my life, you know. So it, it's, you're a mensch. Yeah, it's my father's first name and my my first name together. Right. So that's how that came about. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know you were in the military. What branch were you in? I was in His Majesty's Navy. You were in the Navy. Mm -hmm. For how long? Two, two years. Two years, because I was in the Navy Reserve. And in oh, those okay. days, with Army Reserve, you went in for six months and they had to keep going to meetings. With right. the Navy Reserve, you went in for two years. Right. And then when you got out, you didn't have to go to meetings or anything. Oh, okay. So I figured, you know, do the two years and get it over with. So right, I, right. Yeah, so it was really rough service, too. It really was. It was terrible. Yeah, I can tell. 
saw a lot of action, did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell me where I finally wound up. Where'd you wind up? At the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. Did you really? <laughs> yes. Oh, good for you. What I That's did. Like my, dad. my dad was in the Air Force and he joined the band. Well, what happened was when I went, when I knew I was going to the Navy, I started writing letters like crazy to like uh, the Navy department or whatever saying you really should put me uh, in some kind of radio position because I've been a broadcaster for years and blah 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 and I kept writing them kept writing them right. and then I got uh, uh, brought into the Navy and they put me on a ship the USS Topeka is that right? yeah and I, so I ran their PR department uh, in their, which really amounted to just writing parents and saying your son is really doing a good job here in the Navy. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And one day they say, Bennett, uh, Schwarzman rather, uh, please report to blah, blah, blah. And I go somewhere and they say, do you know anybody in, in, at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service? And I said, no. He said, well, you're being assigned there. Oh, good for you. And apparently the Navy had the, uh, the Navy PR people. I can't remember where I wrote exactly, but they had the power to, uh, to oversee and override anything the Navy might say and say, we want this guy, go get him. Right. And so right. They, they said, uh, you know, we want him for the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. So the, for the next uh, year and a half, I served my time. By doing radio. Uh, 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 at, um, on McCadden Street in Hollywood. Right. Uh, in this big building called the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Really? Yeah. A broadcasting newscast to the world. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, aren't you special? It was terrific, yeah. Uh, the only problem with it was is that at that time, if you um, uh, uh, did it, um, uh, we're at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Back in China, they were making a list of the names of everybody who did newscasts out of the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. And then they made, they they charged us with being spies or being propagandists. Is that right? Yeah. And oh, that's year, cool. Years later, I went to China and they never arrested me for it. But you know, right? Uh, they supposedly I was on a. Uh, this guy is wanted as a uh, as a propagandist because anybody who was on the air and all we all I was doing was the news. Right. You know. So. Well, that's propaganda when you're the enemy. I guess. I guess. You know? Do I look like a propagandist to you? No. Okay. Now, let, let me ask you, do, do you qualify for VA benefits? Yes. Oh, so you're, you're, you're... I've never gone for them, but I we checked into it, and there are certain VA benefits. If I want to buy a home, I still have a VA loan I can get. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a couple other things. I know Marjorie sent away and got all the stuff she got my discharge papers and then she applied and they sent her all the benefits and stuff but i've never i've never used any of them right you know i'm maybe i will someday who knows right I'm right you should consider it go to go probably wind up in a veterans hospital or something well you know what it won't cost you a dime well i guess not i mean uh but uh, i haven't really checked into it i didn't think much of it all right. Right. So, right. Right. Uh, right. And I've never been one who's that that goes out of my way to get free stuff. I, I don't know why, but right. You know, I know people that do. They'll, you know, go crazy sure. just to get something for free. But, right. But you know, I I don't. Right. So, but so anyway, we've uh, we so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find out about your tooth. Yes. When? On uh, Friday. On Friday, okay. So the next time we talk, we'll know. Right. Well, the, we'll know more. Well, you're going to an oral surgeon. He's going to tell you. Right. He's going to tell you five thousand dollars. I bet you. But, who knows? You know. Right. Who knows? Uh, we if that happens, we can probably find a way to get it taken care of cheaper. I'm sure. Right. 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 Now, do you have do you have you have insurance, right? I have Medicare and Mass Health. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you were able to get SAG-AFTRA, but you can't get it, so neither can I. By no. The, by the way, Ed Asner's suit went to a judge the other day. They wanted to, SAG-AFTRA wanted it dismissed. 
And, right. And the judge said, no way. What was the suit? The suit is to restore the benefits we had because they say by doing away with them, they were discriminatory, discriminatory to, towards old people. Ageism. And, yeah, and in spite of the fact that uh, Asner is now dead, uh, his name will still be on the suit. So right, right, good. right, right. It's good. He was a terrific guy. He was a fighter. He was a right. scrappy guy. <laughs> you know, tr a troublemaker. Good troublemaker. Right. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time here. You know, Are you kidding me? I give you 25 minutes, and before I know it, we're there. Right. You know? See you next week. See you next week, same time. L ladies and gentlemen, that is Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Thank but, you, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, and there's uh, Stephen Kravitz. I love talk. As you know, I love talking to Stephen. He's bright. He's smart. He's charming. He's funny. He's all the things that I like to talk to. So uh, we have him here, and we pre-record him, obviously. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we do him day and date usually. We did that one this morning. So yeah, here we are. Uh, by the way, a little bit of a note for uh, all of you. We're planning on calling the intersection tonight. There will be no intersection. Uh, I don't think I'm telling tale, tales out of school here that I shouldn't, but um, um, Jack, uh, or as I know him, Irv, but Jack is back in the hospital again. He collapsed again and hit his head. So uh, they're, uh, they're putting him through a whole bunch of tests to figure out why he's been passing out lately. Um, probably the sheer boredom of doing these shows. I feel like passing out every day. I'm, uh, I sometimes am on the edge of passing out, but I know why, because it's this damn drug that I'm taking that makes you dizzy. Uh, and uh, I've got to figure out what to do about that, because i, I got to stop with it. I, I don't know. It's, it's getting to the point where uh, it's, it, the, the, the benefits are greatly outweighing the negatives, which is me just kind of always feeling like I'm a bit tired and woozy okay so uh, in a couple of weeks I will be off for about a week in about three weeks I think towards the end of the month uh, because I'm going to be having my eyes operated on uh, which is a medical procedure because uh, I'm slowly losing my eyesight if I don't do anything about it because the trouble is my lids are uh, I need to be lifted okay bottom top and bottom and uh it's an ugly operation <laughs> i mean i've seen people who have had it and then they send me pictures of what they look like right afterwards and it, you don't want to even look at these pictures so i will be out for at least a week and then i'll come back and probably be wearing dark glasses on the program so i don't gross you out for a while but it should it should get better it should get better and i will be able to see a lot better and I probably will not get as tired I get this tired feeling because the eyes are always closed when I'm watching television I have to kind of keep my eyes like this in order to be able to see correctly so anyway that will be towards the end of the month and we'll have to take the week off for that and probably a lot of the repeats of programs and things like that that we normally do will not happen uh, like the, uh, you know, the uh, um, thing where I do the uh, on-demand and so on. Uh, the reason for it is, is that I have to have my eyesight and my ability to do that. And I don't see that after this operation I'm going to be capable of doing that for at least a couple of days. Uh, and I have to, after the operation, I'm going to have to keep ice packs on my eyes for about three days. 15 minutes on 15 minutes off you know it's it's a pain in the ass but I'll get over it and I get past it and then I'll my eyes will be much better and then I'll drop dead so you know what the hell but uh, for at least the uh, three days I can say to Marjorie oh Marjorie could you get me a soda a oh, Marjorie could you get me this Marjorie could you get me that you know uh, but um, anyway uh, we have a bunch of about four people waiting right now to talk to me so we'll admit them all 
Uh, come on, Ad admit all there. I just clicked that button. Do it, damn it. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let me see here. Uh, we'll go over to the panel, and there they are. Uh, we have William Ferguson, who is joining us, gets in here about once or twice a week. Uh, Alan's here, who is always there eating something. Rice. Rice, yeah. Y you can't eat before you come on the show? I guess I could. Y yeah, I <laughs> guess you could. <laughs> hey, Charlie Wallace, as I live and breathe. And yeah. Great to see. Let's see here. Never trust an atom. They wake up. Make up. They make up everything. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You get the best T-shirts. I don't know where you find them, but you get the best T-shirts. And they're all science-based, too. Yeah. They're all science-based. Very good. Very good of you. Here comes uh, Jeff Stein. Hello to uh, Vernon Nunn as well. Hi, Vernon. Hey, How are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> well, we were having our little spike in Kentucky as uh, Charlie and I were discussing on the chat. Oh, and oh, yeah, I was noticing that there was some <laughs> dust up going with you and a couple of other people and, you know. Well, yeah, not really a dust up, but just uh, talking about ivermectin and all this yeah. other crap that's going on. Well, thank you God know, you can recall. Thank God for ivermectin. You know, we have get, the fact that we have these wonder drugs. Yeah, <laughs> right. Is is yeah. wonderful. Is just wonderful. And the FDA says you are not a horse. You are not a cow. Please stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan came down with COVID, and he said he's taking that drug. Yeah, I was going to talk about Joe Rogan in a minute, that moron. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, well, no, you, it's not. There are side effects to taking ivermectin. Like if somebody asks you how old you are, you tap your foot 20 times. You know. <laughs> so. Tying up the uh, poison control center with all these calls. Oh, really? Yeah. Texas and Florida. Oh. <sighs> Oh God! And, 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 and you know what it is? It's 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 by virtue of these assholes. Excuse me if I wipe my eyes every now and then, but that's all part of the problem yeah. I've got. Um, uh, preoperative uh, pre testing. Pre preoperative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just wondering if this guy slips when he puts in the the Novocaine and stuff. Oh boy! I could lose my eyesight, couldn't I? I guess he knows mm. what he's doing. Anyway. <laughs> You hope. I, I hope. <laughs> anyway, um, um, let's talk for a second about Fox, for instance, who's been pa who started this ivermectin thing. I mean, can't people sue Fox for passing along this information, which got them sick? They've been doing that for seven years. Yeah, but they haven't been doing this. You know, this is just dangerous. You know, yeah, uh, they, yeah. Uh, they should be held at least criminally negligent. Well, Fox will tell you we didn't do it; our people did. Well, wait a minute. You're responsible for your programming, okay? Right. And if you know, like, when somebody here, like Alan, says something that I feel is not giving misinformation, but giving medical information on this program, and he's not a doctor, I kind of stomp on him for that because I don't want medical information to be disseminated on this program from people who aren't doctors, all right? Uh, and uh, even though Alan may be very knowledgeable in the subject and studies it and so on and so forth, he is not an expert, and I don't want anybody to take anything that he says to the bank, as it were, because I, I'm trying to be a responsible broadcast that way. I would have done it, Alan, if you had called my radio show, for instance. You know, I, I, I and I was always I was always warned by the powers that be at the various stations I was at. Never let anybody except a doctor give out medical information on your show. And even in that case, maybe it's not the best idea because it could be some you know quack. Could be random. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really, I, I don't want that kind of inf a, a misinformation out there. So which brings us around to Joe fucking Rogan. Okay. I'm glad this moron came down with COVID. Okay? <laughs> I hope he fucking dies from COVID. Jeez. Am I being a little a little di difficult here? 
Hey. Did I, didn't I just say last week that I just hope these motherfuckers would just hurry up and die already? Yeah, well, it, 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 what were you going to say, Vernon? I heard statistics tonight that in counties that voted 80 to 100 percent for Trump, the rate of infection, uh, rate of deaths, I'm sorry, the rate of deaths is 15 per 100,000 versus counties that voted for Biden which is less than four. Oh, boy. Well, We're smarter. Now, let me let me bring something up here, because Charlie is the keeper of the the death tolls, and yeah. uh, he put them up tonight, and I was amazed, because, you know, this whole thing has gone down. How low did it get, Charlie? Do you remember? It got, wait, we were having sometimes less than 10,000 cases a day and just how, two months ago. And how about deaths? And deaths were down to like 200 a day. Okay. What was the death toll today? 1,900. Okay. Now, once again, I bring it up. In Afghanistan, we only lost 13 people. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we lost this many people because they probably took Iver- ivermectin or uh, or didn't think that, uh, you know, they listened to Joe Rogan and heard that the vaccinations were bogus. You know, and he tried every kind of drug there was. Okay, he tried ivermectin. And what did he do? He came down with it. I hope he's suffering like a motherfucker right now. I hope he is just squirming because he's, he's coughing and can't breathe and all of that. Because there are morons who watched his podcast and believed what he said. And he had no sense of responsibility for the welfare of his audience. Yeah, I mean, there it is. It's kind of it's yeah. kind of funny how Republicans oh. are saying about the vaccinations. They're saying my body, my choice. But, <laughs> in Texas, but yet in Texas, they're telling women it's not your body, it's not your choice. Exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 we're in a we're in very crazy times, and uh, they passed two things in Texas. I mean, Charlie. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not blaming you. <laughs> but this is Well, here's any- another thing too. The Supreme Court refused to say anything to keep the law from going into effect. What was their reasoning? Did they give a reason? They didn't nothing? give a reason. They just said nothing. They didn't even comment on it. Yeah. Because yeah. I I can't figure that one out. You know? Um uh, usually they say, "Well, we won't take it because we we're passing it back to the." Did they shoot it back to the lower court? No, no. Oh. They said nothing. They didn't say blow me. They didn't say we're going to take the aren't case. Aren't they being? They didn't say nothing. Aren't they being remiss in their in their uh, in their duties? What can no. we do? Fire them? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but aren't they? they they've done this before. What? With other cases, they've done this with other cases where they just don't say anything. Hmm. And did they give any kind of count as to how many judges were for not taking it and how many were for it? Nope. Against it? Wow. They said nothing. Oh boy. Well, here's here's the thing about the law that's that really frosts me. Mm-hmm. It's creating a bounty system yep. where individuals are going to sue someone who either helps a woman get an abortion or facilitates yeah, if, if you, her getting you, an abortion if you drive and they can get yeah. and if you win you get ten thousand dollars from the person you sue plus your court costs yep if you drive a person to an abortion yes you yes. can be ch- fined ten thousand yes. dollars yes even if you don't know that's where you're taking them like an uber driver yeah it could be an uber driver right yeah right They'll quit picking up women. That's what they'll do. Well, I mean, uh, guys will never stop picking up women. Uh, it's just under his eye, women. huh? Under his eye. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it. You know. I mean, the law is draconian, and uh, the it, cruelty is the point. That's the whole point. Hey, the cruelty Texas. is the point. That's the whole Republican Party today. The what, cruelty is the point. They're what, trying to be the the party of cruelty. 
The only other place that does that, who tries to see who can pass the shittiest laws worse than Texas, is Tennessee. Really? Yeah. It's like they have a contest to see who can pass the shittiest laws. Well, I, I don't know. I think Texas holds that pretty well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Texas. I mean, they, they in two, one day, I think, passed two different laws that were draconian. One was the abortion thing, and the other thing was uh, uh, the uh, voting rights thing. Yeah. Where well, basically, ba vote. basically, it made it impossible for you to vote. Yeah, and, and in fact, they, it made it possible for them to say, "Hey, we don't trust that vote in Travis County, so we're just going to throw that out." Mm. That's Austin. Votes mm. in Austin don't count. Mm. Crazy. So what happened? What was exactly the voting law they passed in Texas that made it so impossible to vote? Well, one know? thing they they tried during the COVID was uh, the 24-hour voting, and I think yeah. it was down in the Houston area. 24-hour mm -hmm. voting and drive-by voting—that's now illegal. You can't yeah. do that in Texas anymore. Well, they did the one drop-off box per county, so you've got the Harris County where Houston is, with four million people. They get one drop-off box mm -hmm. for mail-in ballots. And which county has the largest black population? Harris. Harris County. Okay. There you go. I didn't even have to look that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 was, I said that because knowing full well what it was because I used to live there. You yeah. Know. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's horrible what they've done in Texas. And uh, that guy, man, somebody should roll that wheelchair in front of a truck. You know? I mean, it's just, it's yeah, horrible. It I mean, am well, I, that just, I guess I would just I'm, put the lieutenant governor in charge and he's no better. I guess I'm being violent and threatening. Come get me. Okay. Get you booted off Facebook for 30 days. You think I get booted off Facebook for 30 days for this? I already did. I did because I, I said the other day that when these people, when these guys were rushing the planes in Afghanistan, that I said, as a, mili as a former military man, if given the order to, I'd have shot every able-bodied man trying to get on that plane. And Facebook said, no, nope, you get 30 days for that because yep. you're being violent. Really? What do they do, following you? Because they never come get me. This is my fifth offense, I should be, in full disclosure. I'm a, fi a five-time well, offense. But they warned you once. Oh, no, they didn't warn me. They just keep handing me 30-day bans like, well, they could ban me from Facebook tomorrow, and I wouldn't give a shit because hardly anybody watches this show on Facebook. I True. have to, even my Monday show, which is directly done live on Facebook, I have to go ahead and post on YouTube to get a larger audience. And then I also post the audio, and it gets even a larger audience. So, you know, it, it, but Facebook hardly gets me any audience at all complete waste yeah. of time so come on facebook kick me off for 30 days i want that i want to feel i've done something here you know come on but what's his name well you're not you're not threatening zuckerberg. violence come on uh, zuckerberg William is threatening violence what? even Mark though zuckerberg. he's just stating his opinion he's not actually saying he's going to go out and kill people but facebook has you know if you go and look at their rules i don't know you know and stuff if you threaten well, I didn't Oops. threaten Joe Rogan. I just wish he would die of COVID. Oh, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Facebook. They probably agree with you. If, no, they would probably give him a thirty-day ban for that. Really? Yeah. Well, you see, I, I, mean, I, I said got, I said it I've because got, I felt that would only be ju a, a justification for the people whose lives he imperiled by telling them to take this goddamn horse. Medicine. Well, the thing, the thing is, the other day, the last time I caught a 30-day ban was somebody was talking about, you know, the, the Capitol insurrection. He was like, you know, you had, you know, these people didn't have to obey the law or anything. I said, well, by that logic, these people should have been shot for noncompliance. I mean, if, we're, if that's the standard we're going to go by... You know, let's start well, I mean, shooting these people for not obeying the law. Yeah, but you you were saying that as a suppose, blah 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 blah. You know, it's a kind of what ifism. You know, and I still got thirty days for that. Yeah. Maybe they just got your name on a list and they keep an eye on Stop you. Stop threatening to kill people as a suggestion. Yeah, 
Jason, I'm not suggesting we kill anybody. I got a warning from Facebook last election when they when I heard that McConnell and uh, Lindsey Graham got reelected, and I said Americans are so stupid, and they 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 were going to ban me. They gave me a warning for being racist. They gave because you said who was stupid? Game. The Americans are stupid for reelecting Lindsey Graham and 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 Mitch McConnell. And that got you a notification yeah, from Facebook from under what conditions that it was racist? Well, that it was, or, or what do we call it? I, it, I, it was, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I was biased against a certain group, ethnic group. Yeah. Or, or What ethnic group? Whites? Americans. Amer American is an ethnic group? Apparently. Oh. Boy, we yeah. ought to do a show one night here and everybody do anything they think they can do to get us kicked off Facebook. <laughs> for like well, I got a list. I got a whole list for you if you, if you want to follow it. It, it. Guaranteed to get you a ban. There's a list? I know I can make one for you. Yeah. I, I sent out in 2016 a picture of Donald Trump with a dog bone in his mouth. And four weeks ago, I got a thing from Facebook saying that they're going to ban me for three days because that doesn't comply with their rules. What, nothing like speedy. That's yeah, no they sure certainly were later. on the case there, weren't they? Four years later, I mean, you know. <laughs> what the same morons. thing happened to me. I posted <sighs> something. I posted a meme back in 2017. Mm -hmm. It says, "You have to respect everybody's beliefs." Thank and there's you. a picture of two Klansmen in full full Klan regalia, and the caption reads, "No, we fucking don't." Facebook got came back got back to me about six months ago on that. And how long oh, ago was that? I posted it back in 2017. <laughs> yeah, that's my you first. You got back to me six months ago saying, hey, this violates our standards. Do you agree or disagree? Oh, I fucking disagree with that. Yeah. And well, they said, okay, we'll let it go. Well, I mean, there's, oh. a, there's a problem with, uh, <laughs> there's a, problem with uh, uh, a lot of this stuff because I get uh, every now and then, uh, it, it, you know, if I play music, that's in copyright, uh, they send me a note on YouTube. And the note basically is, well, you know, it's copyrighted by other people. Uh, in most cases, they say it's no strike against you, it's nothing like that. It's just that you can't make money off that episode as long as that music is in there. That money, if, it, if they want to do it, will go to the, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, music owners. Copyright owners. Yeah, the cops do. Well, the cops I, do I get notifications on that on videos that I made 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they'll decide that it, there's a copyright thing on it. I'm going, what, what took you so long? You know, I mean, they're on the spot every day when I, whenever they think that I played some music on these shows that wasn't, in fact, they, I have to, I sometimes get, uh, notifications about music infringement on copyright music I own. I bought the license to the music. And then I have to write them back and explain why it's wrong. You know, and, and I, I, I can tell you right now, I have a spot that I have made up here, the one that goes uh, below me. Uh, you know, if they don't like you, you can blow me. I don't know if you've heard it. But uh, that one, every time I play it, they bop me for the music and every time they bop me for the music I tell them I'm protesting it and then they eventually send me something say congratulations your uh, copyright infringement has been removed no shit how many times have I had to tell you that on that one thing and sometimes I don't know some night I'm just going to play it for the whole show and just see how many copyright infringement things they can make up I mean it's just it, it's all ridiculous but I, YouTube at least I can I can live with, okay? But Facebook, what? You know, I mean, when I say they should throw uh, the governor of, 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 uh, of Texas in front of a, enroll him in front of a speeding bus, I'm making fun of him as an asshole. I'm not saying go ahead and do that, you know? Plus, I, I wouldn't want to, you know. I don't know, why can't you, uh, why can't you, not make fun of it. But Joe Rogan can say use ivermectin, and he's mm -hmm. he's fine. They'll run his stuff. 
you know. Last time I checked, stupid people were not a were not a protected class of people. Uh, right, um, exactly. So you know, I mean, I I get a little sick of this idea. I mean, uh, I William Ferguson. I don't think any of the things you mentioned were that terrible. You know, uh, but Facebook does. But Facebook, Facebook, oh yeah, Facebook thinks, thinks I'm fucking evil. Well, what it, what they expect is that they've got a, a forum, okay. For you to say what you feel, to have a, a page on Facebook, and then within that, to give your opinion about stuff. Yeah, well, and and see, then when somebody right. does okay. like you, they say, oh, it's for 30 day, uh, uh, you know, 30 days, no go. You can't see, be uh, funny. You around that, William? Create another account. Yeah, I, I thought about that. You know, it's like, I'm about two seconds away from deleting my Facebook account altogether. Mm hmm I did about I 10 would, years ago. Yeah, fuck these people. I would do it except that I have 5,000 people that follow mine. and uh, I, I, I have I, over 1,500 followers. I can use it for promotion, you know. And, and if, I, if I just say, fuck you, and I end it, I then have to start with zero. Okay, you know. And but, then you'll build up to the five people that really like you. Yeah, but even though even though YouTube can be a pain <laughs> in the ass, yeah, it can be a pain in the ass, it... Uh, uh, you know, I, I, it's been okay. You know, they've been okay to me. And by the uh, way, for those people who are watching me right now, if you haven't subscribed to me, hit the subscribe button right below here and also click on the bell so you'll know when we're doing a program, okay? Do that right now, would you please? Okay? Please? I beg of you? Yeah. Every time I go on YouTube... Everybody's doing these little plugs like, will you please uh, hit the subscribe button? Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I'm not going to hit the subscribe. Play the, play the blow me tape. I want. I don't know if I've heard that one. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll, I'll play the spot. Okay. And this, Buddy Love? And, and, and this will... What? Is that Buddy Love that did that? No, 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 no. Oh, that was a song that he sang last night. I'm that surprised was... we didn't get dinged for that. But here, watch, I'll play this, and I can guarantee you tomorrow I will have gotten a thing saying you're violating music, right? Here, listen to it. This is a spot. It's a minute long. A minute 15. Done by Albert Reynoso. <laughs> now more than ever, it's a breeze to listen to all that GabNet has to offer. Just go to gabnet.net. And along the top of our easy-to-use webpage are a series of links to all the services that carry our latest offerings. Click on YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo, and you'll be taken to video of Alex Bennett's ramble. Tap on TuneIn, and you'll go to our 24-7 feed of all our programs, plus a real-time stream when our shows are live. For those of you who have a Roku device, click and you'll be taken to a page that will install our GabNet app. So you can enjoy our channel, which is rich now, with features the music that, that they, well they're bothered by. Our daily programs. Then, I could even for stop it now before the end of it. For all our recent will... shows, press the Spotify, Pandora, or Stitcher tabs. Finally, Alex Bennett can be heard via the iHeart button. But if you're not at your computer, just download the app for any of these services, and you'll find us there. Mobile. Of course, all GabNet shows are on iTunes. With all these options, you have no excuse not to listen to GabNet, unless you'd rather listen to one of those millions of other people who have podcasts, in which case you can blow me. Okay, so you see that, uh, and that's the music that they got the problem with. And you can believe, bet your life that after the show is over tonight, you can go uh, over there and you'll find out that I can't monetize it, you know. But then, after a day or so, the people I bought it from go to them and say, oh no, I, that's okay. All right? So then I get a thing that says, congratulations. You know, like, I'm supposed to be really happy. You know? So. No, wait a minute. Oh, I got to turn up. Exactly. What? Sometimes when YouTube YouTubers post videos of police behaving badly, mm -hmm. the cops will play music in the background of copyrighted materials so the video gets taken down. Yeah. How do they do that? Well, they'll they'll play they'll play a song by like say uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, but, 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 I, but how something. do they how do they put the music on there? The music was uh, if if anybody's gonna put the music on, it's the person who created the video. No, they they play a video on their iPhone. Yeah. 
and the sound comes out while they're talking to the person, and then YouTube won't let the video be up. Wait a minute, I, I, don't get, I don't get what you're saying, because I, usually, I the mean... The cop will play some music. The cop will play some music on his phone, and while the person's filming the cop behaving badly... Oh, I see. The music is going. So when they try to post it to YouTube, the music YouTube is on. comes yeah. around and says, hey, that's copyrighted material, and they take it down. Well, you know, it could be argued. You could argue. Uh, uh, I'm not going to take it down, because here's why it's relevant I did this recording cops acting badly and they played that music to prevent this from being shown you know at least you can make that plea to them you know but I, I get what you're saying well I mean that's ridiculous you know I mean they shouldn't care I mean I, there are a lot of other services like I use uh, Vimeo which uh, it cost me only 59 bucks a year so I do it and Vimeo, I can put music up. And they've never dinged me for anything, you know. But uh, who who goes to Vimeo? Nobody, you know. It's YouTube's got most of the viewers, so I got to play nice, nice with with uh, YouTube. But watch tonight's show will not be monetized. Um, if you go, if, I don't know if you, when you go there, it shows whether it's monetized or not. But I'll look at it and I'll show you tomorrow night. If it's still that way, because it could be within a few hours, the people I licensed the music from, who are supposed to then jump in, will have jumped in and said, no, that's not copy, you know, he has the license for that. But I pay 150 bucks a year for the license for just all the things like the music you hear in the background there. You know, and I have a site I go to where uh, all of these are available to me. And they're available to me forever. So in spite mm -hmm. of the fact that I stopped subscribing to this service, I can still use that music. I can't reuse it, but I can keep using it in the promo that I used it in. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 it but I, then I have to go explain it to YouTube. That's the pain in the ass. You know, it's my time being used. So. Uh, these are some of the draconian things going on, but you know, I, I can't really I find that much fault with YouTube. They're a very effective form of communication, and they they do right by everybody. You know, they try to do right. Uh, Facebook has become so draconian in just all ways. You know, I mean, I might even say that. Uh, how many here agree with them? Um, Taking Trump off of Facebook. Oh, I do. Mean, right. But is it right? Yes. In this case, yeah. Okay, why? This, this man incited an insurrection. Yeah. He tried to overthrow mm -hmm. the United States mm -hmm. government. He's still trying. He's still yes, Charlie. He's still trying. See, my feeling is is this. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I believe that if you open up a forum and say this is a free forum for expression of thoughts and ideas, then no matter what anybody says, you shouldn't censor them. You should maybe perhaps put a, uh, a, a, a notification that the information in this particular video is not correct or maybe subject to interpretation or whatever. Uh, but. I think to open things up and say, oh, hey, everybody, you're going to have yourself a Facebook page. Go ahead, say what you want to, communicate with people. And then you say, fuck the President of the United States, and they don't like the way you put it, and they take you off. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it's wrong for me to be taken off, and for William to certainly be taken off for 30 days, I, you know, I question it just because we don't like Trump. And we suspect that he created an insurrection. I don't suspect he did. There's, there's one, yeah. There's one difference, though. What, what you're talking about and yeah. what William has had happened to him did not get people killed. Well, right. that that's true. That's true. You know. So what do we do about Joe Rogan? I mean, uh, Spotify was it Spotify that's paying him a million dollars a year to mm -hmm. be on on Spotify exclusively? I like to take a look at the morals clause in his contract. Uh, I wonder if there is one. I think they all do. Well, no, they may have wanted Joe Rogan so much, they gave him a million bucks. 
you know, I mean, they wanted him enough to give him a million bucks. Did they want him enough to just simply put it down? You know, put it down. Don't do all that stuff, Alan. It's distracting. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, it, it, you know, uh, they may have just said, "Oh, you know, we, we, we're not going to sign any of the normal agreements that we sign with people." Well, uh, okay, but what if Joe Rogan tomorrow goes on his little podcast and shills okay. for let me give pedophilia? You, let, me, let me give you an ex example, okay? Uh, most contracts in this business have a morality clause. Mm -hmm. I've refused to ever sign a contract that has a morality clause in it. And my reason is not that I plan to do an immoral act on the air or anything else, but that they expect me, they're hiring me because I'm outrageous, mm -hmm. okay? And they expect me to be outrageous. But if I get too outrageous, you're gonna fire me? No, you're not. I'm not gonna let you have that out. You know, and they can say a lot of things, or, oh, we're, we're, we're talking about the morality clause here. We're invoking the morality clause. Well, go screw your morality clause, you know? So, anyway. I see that in the news just now, New York City issues its first ever flash flood emergency as remnants of Hurricane Ida hit the region. Well, you're wrong. Huh? You're wrong. I don't know. It's on the news. Well, you're know. wrong. <clears throat> okay. I get flash flood warnings every other day here for oh. Harlem. For Harlem. This is a flash flood emergency by the mayor of New York. Oh, well, good for him. That idiot. Yeah, I don't know. Who cares? Too bad, I, too bad, he, too bad he isn't in a wheelchair. Did you hear that, Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Vernon. Is it raining by you, Alex? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm getting tons. Yeah, it's tons it's, of water. Uh, yeah, noise. maybe they should uh, announce a flash flood in Connecticut. Too. No, they. Oh, have, we already they, heard. They have. Gee, Sorry I think know. in the last two weeks I've had about eight, nine flash flood warnings. Oh, this you need to do that, this that my way, Alex. Yours. Yeah, and w it, it, I'm sorry, we don't get flash floods in Harlem. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> second flash murder. Oh, 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 the latest one. I got one today. This was another one of those big alerts that comes through with that annoying sound that said uh, tornado warning for Harlem. Wow. I don't think there has ever been a tornado in Harlem. Okay? <laughs> yes, Vernon. I'd like to go back to the Texas abortion law. Okay. We're all over I the heard, place tonight. I heard, I heard the... Well, as I understand the way laws like this work, if if Texas passes this law, then it can be challenged in federal court and ultimately to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But if it gets to the Supreme Court and they don't do anything and it goes into effect, mm -hmm. the law is still unconstitutional because Roe versus Wade has not been overturned. So that law goes directly against Roe versus Wade. Now, mm -hmm. I heard it suggested tonight on a TV show yeah. that tomorrow, yeah. President Biden could issue an executive order creating a privacy commission and send them to Texas to protect these abortion clinics with the backup of federal marshals. Because it is federal law. he could do law. that. Because it it's federal law. It is And he could law. do that tomorrow with an executive order, and there's nothing the Texas governor could do about it. You're absolutely right. By the way, we have hardly anybody tonight calling. We've got, you know, uh, Charlie, thank God, and William, who are not here all the time, or Vernon, who's not here all the time. If I didn't have them, we'd have hardly anybody tonight. It'd just be you and Jeff. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you know, if I don't start getting more <laughs> calls here, I just don't see any reason to continue this program, okay? I mean, I'll find something else to do, or I'll do a show once a week or whatever. Mm. But, gee, you know, come on, folks. Monday, we, you we have a lot the, of people, we need right? The, we, we, we have a lot. Monday, on the Monday show, we get yeah. like uh, 12 people, sometimes 16 people. Yeah. You know? Uh, it, something quality, quantity over quality. Well, that's just because you get some women to call in. Well, you yeah, would, well, I get my wife <laughs> to call in, and I, we have um, uh, Mandy, Mandy, who's a charmer. 
you know. Uh, we love Mandy. I love my wife too, by the way. I just want to add that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I mean, it's uh, it just it uh, you know, it's just it's just disconcerting, folks. I mean, it's been very slow lately, and I don't know why. Maybe it's slow everywhere. <clears throat> you know, it is still summer after all. You know, and once it starts uh, getting cold, and we in fact I haven't heard from Brian Neary uh, all week. Yeah, he wasn't on Monday, yeah. And he, I don't think he was on. Was he on last week? I think one day. So, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, so I, I don't... I remember that. Is it that one? Yeah. But then again, all you people have jobs, you know, and uh, they, that, uh, that's... that's uh, well, Alan doesn't. That's why Alan's here every night, you know. <laughs> uh, and Jeff, uh, you know, Jeff's retired. I really am. <laughs> I really every am. day, every day I'm retired. Yeah. Permanently. But um, uh, I just, you know, I, I as I'm saying that uh, I really, uh, I really want to see more participation around here. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna just pack it in. I mean, I, I'm tired enough as it is. I do this show because people like you guys, you know, want to do it, uh, and. Uh, uh, let's see here. What else is in the news? Anything else? Vernon, you're always riled up about something. Well, what got me riled up today was the... Oh, oh, there is this one other thing. Marjorie Trader Green, along with Kevin McCarthy, are telling the, the telecom companies that if they comply with the subpoenas for the select committee, that they will shut them down if the Republicans become a majority in 2022. Really? Yeah. Yep. There you go. And what I'm telling, what I'm thinking to myself is, call their bluff. Keep those fingers up, by the way, William, until Facebook dumps us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What? Well, we continue. That sounds like something Stalin would say. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, we know where you live. It's just like these people intimidating school boards. You know, we know where you live. If you vote this mask mandate, we know where you live, and we'll yeah. we'll come and make you sorry. Blah blah blah. Well, this is the the cruelty is the point. With they're Republicans assuming nowadays. they're assuming they're going to be in power in two that's years. Right. That's that's the, but in the meantime, have. they're trying to pull a Trump bullyism to try to keep these telecoms from lawfully providing the information. And they're the saying it's word. illegal. You know, what information? But it's not. What information does the committee want? They, want they have records. told these companies to not destroy any information, any records of certain people that they are interested in possibly calling as witnesses. Their including telephone Trump, records. Trump. Including Trump. Yes, mm -hmm. including yeah. Trump. Mm -hmm. And, and they're saying that we may, we may subpoena these people as witnesses and mm -hmm. therefore would want this information as part of the information, the testimony for the select committee. And you don't ignore a congressional subpoena. No, you don't ignore a congressional subpoena. That is illegal. Y y yeah. <laughs> you can go to jail for that. Yeah. Well, uh, that's obstruction of justice, what they're doing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Why isn't Kevin McCarthy and Marjorie Trader Greene uh, being pulled up on ethics charges just yeah. for making those statements? Um. Because they can get away with it, because they're Congress people, and well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, the the Democrats are being pussies if they don't yeah. do that. Well, I got news for you, Vernon. Uh, you know, let, let, let me say, put a say it like it is: the Democrats are pussies. You know, they really are. I mean, I I I don't I don't like it when the Democrats simply lie down and let people trample yeah. over them. Uh, and and they are famous for doing that, and they can be counted to do that, and that's why the Republicans keep drop, uh, dumping all over them, you know. So I mean, I don't. Uh, uh, I really wish the Democrats were tougher in all ways, but I don't think they are. They never had a spine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I don't know. I'm 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 in this never never land about. Biden and the way he handled this whole uh, Afghanistan thing, whether he handled it the best way possible, but I don't like hearing people being Monday morning quarterbacks yeah. and coming out with their theory of what they would have done if they were president of the United States. No, I'm sorry, yeah. you're not president of the United States. 
people are not going to die under your watch and the decisions you make you have to make very carefully so I don't know if he made the right decisions or the wrong decisions and I think the only time we're going to know that is years from now I don't think this was a, I don't think this was in any way possible to get it right. Oh, it's an impossible situation. You know, it's uh, what what is it the what was the what was this on the Star Trek? What was that scenario where you couldn't you couldn't <laughs> the win? Kobayashi Maru. Kobayashi Maru. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, this is the Kobayashi Maru. You can, there was no right answer here. The wrong, well, a lot but the, of people, there, was, there was no right answer and one wrong answer. And the wrong answer was stay there for another 20 years. Yeah. What At a lot of people don't understand is that Trump wait, wait. put a bunch of people into the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. even though he, he, he uh, uh, did this, uh, this agreement with the Taliban mm -hmm. to allow us to withdraw interpreters, etc., and other Afghans. He put people in the bureaucracy that did their damnedest to slow up the SIV process. Right. So these people couldn't get their SIVs, the special immigrant visas, to get these people out of Afghanistan. So it was all these Trump people that were put into the State Department and places like that that effed it up. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. they're going to blame that on Biden? Well, Come on. Well, you know, I mean, I, I would have said that if I were Biden, again, I'm being a Monday morning quarterback here, okay? If I were Biden, I probably would have done something early on as soon as I got into office and said, let's get this thing rolling because we got a deadline here and this is very important at this point and let's get it done. Yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, they, they did. They started telling people they needed to leave Afghanistan back in January when Biden took office. They, people wouldn't go. Well, the only people left over there, the only Americans left over there, if I'm not mistaken, are contractors. Yeah, there's, there's some who have dual citizenship, and, mm -hmm. and they have the extended family that are still there that they can't bring home with them. Right, right. So, I mean, that's that's the problem. Uh, and and a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. a lot of those uh, guys were profiteering from war. Let's yeah. be honest about it. And if they didn't get out, so be it. You know, not our responsibility. We told you, hey, here's the deadline. Get your families together. Get them to the airport. Let's get this thing done. The Taliban supposedly were, were doing, kind of doing their job. It's just they weren't as efficient as, say, our military would be. Yeah. But they supposedly, listen, they wanted <laughs> us out of there. They were very happy to get our yeah. people to the airport and to make it easy for them to get to the airport. But it well, was, uh, it was ISIS K, which sounds like, I don't know, breakfast cereal or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, ISIS K that was making all the trouble. And uh, the, the Taliban, by the way, doesn't like them. They're not very oh. fond of them. You know. But uh, so I bet, but, but nevertheless, I, I, you know, I, I think Biden was handed an impossible situation. Uh, where there was only one wrong answer, and that was stay there. Okay, uh, because I mean, how long do we stay there? Twenty years? What? Yeah. Why do we want to stay there? All the well, money? the good news is, a year from now, nobody will be talking about it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And not one commentator on on mainstream media asked those people that wanted us to stay, "How are you going to pay for it?" Oh, by the way, I want to do, I, I want to do some. Well, oh, they always go, they always find the money somehow to, yeah, these forever wars or these yeah. tax cuts for the rich, or what you know. Nobody ever asks how we're going to pay for all that, mm -hmm. but when it comes to something like oh, universal health care, for example, well, we need to see the receipts here. We need to, mm -hmm. you need to show us the books. Well, I, I put something up on my screen, which is my ad, my uh, 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 what do you call it. Uh, uh, my adding machine. Uh, so, how many years were we there? Or there, twenty years, right? Yeah. And yeah. how many people? How many? How many Americans did we lose over there? I think it was twenty five hundred. Was about twenty four hundred sixty two. Oh, okay. Well, let me back this off then. Uh, twenty four. That doesn't include the contract. Twenty four hundred and sixty two. Right. No, forget that, it. Here we go. That, that's killed. just American soldiers. Okay. Uh, divided by twenty years. So that means, okay, that they were, there are 123 people killed every year, okay? Divided by 
12 equals 10 people every month okay and let uh, we could narrow that down to per day but we get to about 1.5 people per day don't we so yeah, that's, that's one person that, every three days huh one person every three days yeah yeah but so what we're saying basically okay uh, is that we you know all we lost were 123 people a year that's and we all lose we more lost. people than that we lose more people than that to drunk driving in this country how about covid yeah, we lose more than that. Just I mean, in how, Texas today, every day in COVID. today we almost lost as many people to COVID as we lost in 20 years in Afghanistan. Yeah. So, which should be our priority at this point? Exactly. You know, uh, and what? But how are we going to pay for it? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Hey, listen, you know this whole notion about. Uh, oh, the national debt is just mounting up and mounting up and mounting up. Uh, there's a thing that uh, that they did on uh, John Oliver about the national debt and that it's a complete myth. That mm -hmm. what happens is if the debt gets to be too much, they just print more money. Yep. It's not like oh, all of us. It's through treasury bills. Yeah. It's just it's just the ins the insanity of the debt limit that they have to raise. Congress has to. Yeah. pass a new debt limit yeah that's all bullshit mm -hmm. yeah it, it it that came about before congress adopted a budgeting process once they adopted a budgeting process the debt ceiling should have disappeared yeah oh and i love i love this this these republicans who say they want a balanced budget amendment okay let's say we do let's say we do get this yeah first um what happens when the when Congress doesn't balance the budget? Do we hold them in contempt of court? Right. Yeah, go ahead and insert your own joke here, folks. Yeah. Or, you know, do, and what federal judge is even qualified to review the budget? Hmm. Yeah. Where does it, where well, do the if we, if we ever did balance the budget, like, uh, like uh, uh, they did back in the 1990s, yeah. you know under Clinton then the next Republican comes in he'll say well this is all your money we'll just give it back to you you know yeah. and, yeah. and they, there goes and they the do this debt on again purpose. But, and they do this on purpose yeah yeah but you know how many trillions of dollars did we spend over in, in Afghanistan on a war we were three. never never ever going to win we knew that 5.3 trillion huh 5.3 trillion that's right I mean, why, why, what, what is that insanity? You know, they always said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. But well, we should have learned from Vietnam that yeah. this isn't what you do. You don't win the hearts and minds of people who are not in uh, under, do not live under your terms. No, okay. the insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, you're right. That's the way they term is oh hot yeah 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 but we you know we we we've done uh we're idiots we're morons yes uh alan did you say that uh jack is not gonna be doing a show tonight that's correct yeah he's falling down again yep he's back in the hospital oh okay. god yeah well you know um i just talked to him about it tonight last night it's funny the last time i mentioned this um, I he said, how did Alex find out I was in the hospital? And I finally had to call him after the show and said, I found out because you called me from the hospital. And he didn't remember. <laughs> well, Wear a helmet, Jack. Give me a break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it, 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 you know, and I mean, I understood that he was then in a real had a real problem. Because something had happened where it just at one point he said he got went into the hospital, and they asked him the questions they asked like who's president of the United States he didn't know, Herbert Hoover yeah he couldn't answer <laughs> those are common questions that well, they ask people to find out if they had a stroke they asked me who the governor of New York was and they asked me who the mayor of New York was and I didn't know, and I didn't have a stroke I just didn't give a shit you know. They asked me the same question when I came out of my coma. <laughs> yeah, 
uh, uh, please, you know, ask me later on. You know, so I, so finally, I finally said to the doctor, "Okay, well, who are they?" And he said, "Cuomo and De, uh, De Blasio." And I said, "Of course, you know," but I just couldn't remember. You know, so I mean, and it's in my medical record. I went online to my medical record at Mount Sinai and he says he couldn't remember who they give. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe some people just don't give a shit about these half-assed politicians, right? Like, I don't give a crap about de Blasio. I think he's terrible, you know, but anyway. So, I, I, I but anyway, he, uh, he forgot that he had, uh, he had called me. He said, I did, you know. And then, after that call, I talked to him the next day. He said, did I tell you I went to the hospital? <laughs> Oh, yeah. This yeah, was on. He called me the uh, night that he didn't do a show when he came back, you know. But anyway, so he won't be on tonight. But, you know, we'll play uh, one of his programs or last night's program in its place. So, so everybody will be uh, be happy that it's it's there. You know? mm. I mean, the good news is no Amy. But, uh, you know. Then I'm dumb. Uh, ta -da. <laughs> I, what about your buddy Mike? What do you mean about my buddy Mike? Mike Allen, yeah. Oh, well, Mike I Allen. Like, I like Mike Allen. I'm just glad he doesn't call my show. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You know. But uh, uh, no, I think uh, Mike's okay. Mike's. I I Mike's been there forever. He's there every night for Jack. You know that's loyalty. It's absolute loyalty, and I have to. Yeah. Wee wee. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's some. Some things I could do away with, you know, like that, <laughs> that wheeze of a laugh he has and things like that. But, you know, he's not harmful, and he, he, he's been good to Jack, and I appreciate that, you know. I, I like how Jack will ask him a question, and he'll change the subject. Who? Uh, uh, oh, Mike, asking him about his neighbor, and Mike different. was talking about the, the fires going on. In California, or something. Oh, we're going to discuss California here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah speak, I speaking uh, of that, there's a bad one near Lake Tahoe. Yeah, I, I got married in Lake Tahoe, on, on the South Shore, which is probably burned to a cinder right now. Okay, yeah. we're going to talk about California here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, is that your barbecue? Yeah, welcome to California. You know, this is the last time I tried to uh, deep fry a turkey. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I actually I actually did that. I tried to deep fry a turkey once and caught the backyard on fire. Oh, the fire department showed up, and I'm now on a permanent list. This guy does not get to deep fry turkeys ever again. And also, you're not allowed to do it on Facebook. So you found yeah, I'm not found, allowed to do it on Facebook. You're right. You found a fryer big enough to fit Trump in it. <laughs> deep fry a turkey. There you go. Did there I you go. Play off the Trump jokes. He's gone. You no, know? he's not. That's the problem. Well, yeah, yeah but let's not, not give him. let's not give him credibility. You know, he's, he's like herpes, Alex. He's like herpes. He, he yeah, yeah. It's hard to get he's rid of. Back. It's hard. He'll uh, never get rid of this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, whatever. So, uh, hey, listen, that's about it. Oops. Mm. Uh, that's, that's make it louder. Kind of it. Yeah, make it louder. Right, right. Just a little bit louder now. Thank God they don't ever charge me for playing this. Yeah. And the company that I bought it from doesn't even have this song still on it anymore. So I better not lose it. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, always like uh, talking to you, William. Uh, Alan, well, it's nice having you here. Charlie. God, I what was it? Was there bad weather or something? No, no, I'm just taking Wednesday off. Hopefully for the rest of the season. Oh, good. We'll we'll, we'll be able to see you at least on Wednesdays. Vernon, pleasure having you here. You know, our Arkansas, uh, Kentucky representative. And yeah, uh, yeah, don't don't lump me down there in Arkansas, <laughs> no, please. No, no. And uh, finally, uh, uh, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Nice having you here. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel. They, they go away. And uh, Jack Bishop is not here tonight. Uh, he is off uh, since he fell down, hit his head, and wound up in the hospital again. Boy, I'm, let's just all keep a good thought out for Jack, okay? That would be a nice thing to do. 
Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night. Back here again tomorrow night. Be here, bang, 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 tomorrow night. Same time, uh, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, please go out and get vaccinated, will you? Uh, don't act like Joe Rogan. Uh, and uh, wear a mask, okay? Bye, everybody. <laughs>